Hello everyone and welcome to tonight's show. I'm Ninja Chris, aka Chris, Chris Low. Yep, that's me. Call me a ninja if you like. Yep. Anyway, today, uh, this month, we're going to discuss the history and present and all about greats, really. It's just, it's going to be a great show. Not my best pun. I don't even know if it was a pun. But there's going to be a lot of grapes involved in this. So we better go back in time a bit. See, the first time we had grips, obviously this show is going to be based mostly around wine. Because that seems to be all grapes are centred around right now. So the first time grapes were used in wine was back in Georgia in 6000 BC. Now, that was the first time we had it in wine. There was wine before in 7000 BC from China, but that was only rice wine, so that wasn't grapes, and I don't even know why I mentioned it, but anyway. In, in China, there was rice wine, but it doesn't count because it used rice and not, not grapes. So Georgia, 6000 BC, was the first time grapes was used in wine. And then in the Egypt, the ancient Egypt, they mostly used wine, drank a lot of wine in Egypt, and... Uh, Usually it resembled blood. Lovely, isn't it? Because it's kind of like the blood, the the rivers turning red for the blood. Blood, the rivers run red with blood. That's kind of, and they also probably drank it. And they also drank a lot of wine. But most places back then, that was their kind of staple drink. And then we went to the, then we go into the ancient Greeks where they worship the god of winemaking, Dionysus. <laughs> he was the son of Zeus, of many of his Zeus's sons. He probably wasn't too popular with his brothers and because it because he was because all his brothers and stuff like Poseidon and they were all off fighting everything and uh, Dionysus was there just getting absolutely sloshed. Ah, well, it is what it is. Good old Dionysus. <laughs> go for it. Just have a good old drink. While, it, while all your brothers go off fighting and doing all these protection of places, he'll protect your wine stock. Well, he'll more, he'll drink it. He's got to test his product. Hey, look, that's the way it is. So, yeah, they used to grow a lot. They had to grow a lot of grapes back then as well. So, it's a lot of wine that everybody drank. Nobody really drank water back then, it seems, because every single time I see them drinking, it's always a glass of wine or something. A cup, glass, whatever. Goblet of wine. Whatever you want to use back then. Dionysus is also known in ancient Rome which is the next one up, he was named Bacchus, which is where he wasn't such a nice guy. He kind of turned in the Bacchus version. Dionysus was nice and drinky, but it, it kind of escalated. And he started, he carried a cult and did some ritual stuff. Let's just, lay, let's just say that. I don't know whether it was as bad as chocolate or everything, but whew, I'm guessing it wasn't brilliant stuff because when it comes to rituals, you're kind of like, oh dear, no rituals, please. But hey, we got we got to do it. And uh, <sighs> the Greeks and the Romans like to you use the wine to try and create medicines and stuff because apparently you drink wine. It, it can help your lifespan if you do it in a moderative manner. You don't want to overdrink because, well, then you'll you'll develop a alcohol thing and just become an alcoholic. 
I guess it's a blazer, really. <laughs> you just become an alcoholic. And obviously, for everyone, we've got Christianity and the Jewish who follow, who drink wine, Christia Christianity and Jewish services. They all drink wine. Or in most modern services, will drink grape juice. Which is technically wine. Grape juice is technically wine. It's just not been fermented. It's been pasteurized. Where it just basically sits there and, and then becomes becomes well grape juice. So it essentially is wine, so it works. So yeah, it's just done differently. Not put yeast and fermented it or stuff like that. So it's all good. It's all good. You could drink as much grape juice. Essentially, don't want, you don't want to overdo that either because apparently fruit juice, apparently too much fruit juice is actually too good, too big on the natural sugars. So you don't want too much fruit juice either. Drink water. Water is good for you. If you go to drink a lot of water, it's getting warmer outside. So need to you need to get your watering. You get in warm weather. Most grapes need to be grown in warm weather. As you, as most of you will probably understand that, it needs to be warm. But any climate, you can actually really grow grapes if you if you do it right. You can. And uh, well, how do you how do you grow the grapes? What what do you use? What sort of you use uh, vitis, which is a grape vine, and there's eighty one species of it. I'm gonna go. I was gonna go through them, but. I won't do all 81, so you can breathe a sigh of relief. Because, whew, that was quite a list I saw. Right, I'm not going through all of them. I'll go through the 12 pop, the 12 popular ones. You've got, you've got Vitis vinifera, vinifera, which is the common one. So whenever you see grape vines and stuff, you'll usually see a Vitis vinifera, which is the common one. Then you've got the Vitis Amorenis, which is an Amor Asian grape. So yeah, that's just the, it's a grape, the Asian Amor Asian grape. Fine, yeah. And you've got the Vitis Labrusca, which is also known as the Fox grape vine. Don't ask me why, but it's the Fox. It's a Fox grape. And then you've got the Vitis vulpina, which is a wild grapevine. I guess that's out in the sticks somewhere. No, hidden. They're just, they just grow naturally, I guess. Uh, uh, you've got the Vitis riparia, which is a riverbank or frost grape. I guess it's mostly on the riverbank, so that'll do. I guess it will. I guess that one works in the frosty weather. <laughs> uh, then we've got Vitis astivalis, which is a summer grape. And whew, they're quite difficult names to say. And we're still not done because we've got Vitis rotund, rotundifolia, which is a muscadine grape. <laughs> Good fun, this is. This is this is why I can't do do, do all eighty one. <laughs> I probably lose it. And then we've got the Arizonica, which is Arizona technically. And we've got the Californica. You can work that one out. It's California, okay. And we've got the Rupestris, which is a mountain grape. <laughs> a bit funny. <laughs> uh, uh, Vitis Berlanderi, Berlanderi, something like that. That's a fall grape. I'm guessing that's like autumn or something, like winter maybe. <laughs> then we have Vitis Cognetai, which is a crimson gro glory grape in Japan and Korea, usually. And then to finish off the whole lot of the grapevines, we've got the 
hybrid grape vines, which is basically mixing them all together. So if you you just mix a couple of grape vines together, there's a lot of those kind of hybrid situations out there. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're picking all these, it's you're picking all these and studying it and everything, and you're har you harvesting and stuff. It's called the viticulture. So that's how that's harvesting the grapes and studying them, and they, that's how we all know about the grapevines and stuff. We use viticulture to find it out, <laughs> and they, and. They all release flavonoids, which is good for your health, which is what you need in your body. So you get some flavonoids inside of it. <laughs> They're good for you. <laughs> and then we're on, now we should move on to the wine. <laughs> the, well, that seems to be where it was all heading. How do you, how do you start off your wine processing? Well, you get your grapes, obviously. You put them in a know, put them in a big truck, take them over to the factory. You put them in a wine press situation so it can go through the maceration process. Squeeze it down, you know how it works. Squeeze it on. It's a lot easier to do white wine because you just squash that. You get the you get the juice out of it, and then yeah. With white wine, you go squash it down, but you've also got to keep the grapes with the skin so they ferment in the yeast. And they have to keep in a cool temperature so, so the yeast can mix in. It's pretty much the same for both, but white wine seems a lot more easier. Sort of. <laughs> Not saying I could do it. I'm not planning on making some wine. Go figure. <laughs> and uh, they call it must when you've got it fresh, freshly crushed. They call that the must. So it's all, well, it's all musty. <laughs> and then you've got the pomace, which is the waste of the grapes, which is basically turned into compost. And then when... Uh, I believe when you finish with the fermentation, you get the lees, which is uh, dead yeast. <laughs> so, so, it all goes in for the fermentation, and then that, then that makes up your wine. If you want some wine, the best way to do it is add some yeast, because it releases the ethanol and mixes it together. And after a long period of time, you've got it set. So funny that they have to keep testing it. They keep having to have to get it out of the machine because they've got loads of different cylinders full of fermenting wine, probably at different stages. So they have to keep going in this poor little tap and you have to test it, do all this stuff with it. But of course, they have to spit it out. Cause when it they have to do that. Or else, when they got to the last one, they'd be absolutely hammered and they won't be full focus. So they drink it, test it, swirl it around the mouth, and then spit it out. They have to check whether it's ready, fully fermented, something like that. <laughs> I don't know how to, how else to say it. <laughs> and the sugar levels in the wine, they they increase the later the harvest of, of the grape. The later the grape is harvested, the sugar levels are higher. So it makes it more of a sweeter type wine. You can freeze it as well, which made it, makes a kind of ice wine, which is a dessert, which is a dessert wine. So add the sugar, the, uh, the synthetic stuff with is engineered and... Uh, that is fake wine. You could do ch chapitalization where you add sugar to the grapes or more, al and more alcohol after fermenting. But it's not allowed in some countries to, to add the sugar and stuff. So, yeah. 
<laughs> don't break the rules in them countries. Probably the ones that don't allow drink. Because Islam, they don't quite allow the drinking. Unless you're a cal caliphate guy. One of the Muslim stewards. They like to have a sneaky one every now and then. You know. Even the Islams like to like to dabble just because they're the leaders. They like to have a they like to have a glass of bubbly. <laughs> you got Enology, which is the Enology, which is the study of wine and wine makings. So that Enologists are the experts in science of wine. And you've got a sommelier, which is ones that you see sometimes in restaurants come up to you. They're, they're the master of the wine knowledge. They know everything when they talk to you. They start babbling off all this stuff when you have, when you have a wine on the menu. Like, Here you go. This is so blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I don't know what. I, just pour it and let me have a drink of wine already. I don't care what it is. <laughs> there was uh, Erinai One. It was a winery f factory that was found in 2007 along the Arpa River in Arni Armenia, which was founded from founded to be from 4000 BC. So it was the earliest with the wine factories where they actually produce the wine properly. So that's where they produce the wine. So there's a, one of the oldest wine factories. I think it it's more rubble and everything now, but it's sort of maintained as a building, which is, which is cool, which is cool. <laughs> oh, if you don't mind, I'm going to take a drink. I want to take a drink and... We'll go through some wine grapes and well, go through some grapes in a bit. I want to say hello to everyone first. I want to greet me fan, me viewers. I'll say hello. Let's see, see who's here. Hello, Anna. Good to see you. Catherine, not Catherine. Hey, very good to see you. Jeannie, always good to see you. Cecilia, not seen you for a while. Good to have you back, bro. Terry, welcome. You're always welcome here. Maui, just as welcome. <laughs> I love you all, guys. Hi. Hey, 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 hey. Have I said hello to you all? <clears throat> Trying to work you all in. <laughs> yep, Jeannie, sissy. <laughs> You're all like you are. Or in what? I don't know. Depends what wine you're drinking, I guess. MLG, hello. What am I pointing at you? Hello. <laughs> I, should, I should wave. MLG, it's good to see you. <laughs> Diane, good to see you too. Oh, I should stop that. That hurts me wrist. Oh, I'm doing it again. I'm just doing it a different way. Yeah. It's good to see you all here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. I'm happy. You're all great. I'm still not done with talking about the grapes. I just needed a break. Plus, I've had a little bit of a sore throat, so my throat seems to be very, very dry at the back. So I've been drinking a lot of water. I've been also doing quite a lot of talking today. Anyway, <laughs> I spent something with the church. I've been out talking to human beings, which I'm quite proud of myself. Quite proud to go out and talk to the hum humans, which is bit more proactive of me to do actually walk up to them and say hello which i think is very good for me to do i'm very happy to do that with people so yeah good on me okay that's that's very much off topic anyway we should 
Well, we're going to get into the deep crooks of wine right now. This is the the deep the deep wine. <laughs> That's just wine. Obviously, variations of wine. We've got white and red. The white wine is made from white grapes or green grapes. Go figure. <laughs> And the red wine is made from blue, black, purple, them sort of coloured grapes, the darker coloured grapes. You can squeeze them and then it makes them nice and red and then ready to ferment. And you've got rosé, which is a pink wine. It's not quite good enough to be red wine, so it's a pink wine. We've got an orange wine, which is made from white wine grapes, where the grape skins aren't removed. So like, I think that's like with the red wine, you can leave, you can leave the grape skins on with the white, white grapes, but it's not as common, I don't think. So... I've not really heard of much of the orange wine, but apparently it exists, and yeah, it it works. <laughs> you got fortified wine with a higher alcohol content than the other types. So you want more alcohol, get it fortified. <laughs> and we meant we touched on it earlier. We mentioned I mentioned ice wine earlier. It's a wine with a characteristically sweet taste and a low alcohol content. So I guess it's for those who want, a, want wine, but they want the alcohol, but just just don't overdo it. Don't, don't overpower me with it. Then And then we've got the dessert wine, which is a sweet one. So that will mean that the grapes probably were harvested very, very late on. They were the grapes were on the vine for quite a while before they were taken and then you make a nice nice sweet grape oh and one thing i found out was that a, a dry about a dry wine because that was one thing that i wanted to know what dry wine meant and that just means that there's a low sugar content in it so the drier the wine it means there's less sugar in it. So I'm guessing that means it's really, really a lot thicker. I'm guessing that's the thicker stuff. <laughs> I'm guessing I'm not really much of a wine drinker, so I'm only work I'm only working off what I've read up about. So forgive me. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> it's good, it's good. And we got some grape types. Obviously we we have the grapes in a champagne, which is the sparkle, which is a sparkling right. wine, made made with pin pinot noir and pinot mun munia munia and chardonnay. So pin pinot noir is a red grape wine, pine cone shaped bunch. So on the bunch, when it's grown, it's kind of a Pine coney looking. And the Pinot Muina is a red wine, is a red wine grape, mostly grown in France. And that's that's good for the French there. And then you've got you get your champagne all sparkly. To get it sparkly, it's basically a double fermentation. You ferment it and then you put it back in and ferment it again. It makes it, I guess it makes it all fizzy. Makes it all sparkly, and then you get your champagne. <laughs> oh, then we're on to the Sauvignon Blanc. I don't know, I always love saying that Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> which is a green skin grape, which is grown mostly in Bordeaux. It was first cut in. 1880 in California, though. So, yeah, that's your Sauvignon Blanc. So, 
most grapes I've noticed are and grape wines are the grapes on the wine bottle. So the, when you drink a Sauvignon Blanc, that's that's actually the grape in there. And then we got a Cabernet Franc, which is blue, black, blue and black sort of grape colour, which I believe also made in France. And then we have the Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a reddy purple, which it which is kind of a hybrid kind of grape because it's crossed with a Sauvignon Blanc and a Sauvignon Franc. So that's why then them two are together and it's uh, apparently a highly recognized one. And we got the Merlot grape, which is a dark blue, which is technically an offspring of the Cabernet Blanc. There it is. It's a blending grape, so it blends with others, a lot of others. So. <laughs> it's got a blackbird name, local to Bordeaux. Quite a lot of stuff going on in Bordeaux. <laughs> and we've got some... Grenache, which is widely planted gr red grape wine, started a town in a town, Aragon. It's a high alcohol and a late harvested grape. So, yeah, it's probably, it's probably a sweeter wine, but it's just got high alcohol in it. Eey. And we have a Tempranillo which is red and also in Spain, Aragon, or Tinta Ruiz in Portugal. That's the Temperillo. Ooh. And we've got Riesling, which is a white from the Rhine, Germany. March 13th, 1435 is the name Riesling in 1552. So the the grape has been grown since 1435, but it was named Riesling in 1552. It's good to freeze for ice wine. And we're on to the Semillon, which is made in France or Australia. And that's pretty much about the Semillon. I think it might be a white grape. It's I don't think I noted that one. Oopsie. <laughs> it's a great tile. I like I like saying the names. <laughs> like Similio. It's, it's such good fun names to name the grapes. You got the Aryan grape, which is a white grape, which is native to Spain, which is quite a popular demanded grape. It's quite a high up grape, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then we're on to the Palomino, which is a sherry white grape. Oh, yeah. Yes, grapes can make you sherry as well. It's a sherry white. It's kind of a neglected grape. It's unfortunate because apparently it's a good one. It's it's a good... A Palomino is apparently a good one for winemaking in Jerez. Yeah, they like to use it for winemaking. I guess nobody really knows much about it. It's a shame. Some some grapes kind of fall under the radar, but hey, eh, people people know that if you know your grapes, it's good to know your grapes. And then now we've got a Concord grape, which is a dark blue or purple, commonly for grape juice. And jams and apparently it's disease resistant as well so that's good because yes great grapes can get uh, diseased and stuff this it we could go all black and rotten i think that's part of philomonia or something like that it philophera it's something that goes on it basically kills the vine and obviously the grapes with it and then you have to cut all that off to make and dispose of it as quick as possible before it spreads 
kind of like a it's kind of like a virus filifera, I believe. So be careful with it. Unless you've got Concord grapes, and apparently they're disease resistant. But I'm guessing that they, they, they all have issues every now and then. <laughs> we've, we've got the Moondrop grape, which is kind of squished. It's kind of a squished in type one. Uh, <laughs> squished, squished is a good, yeah. mini mini squished in. It's a sweet. It's one of the sweeter black grape varieties, but it's not. Com it's not able to be grown at home. It has to be specially grown in certain circumstances. So I'm guessing you can order them in and eat them, but you can't grow them in your own home. I'm guessing you need the right materials or something. You got the mission grapes, which is a red, which is a red gate grape, which called us. A mission grape because it was from a Spanish mission back in the 1800s where they went and they had the grapes there. They, they got it from like Mexico or something. Like, but and they make good California wines, so, so it kind of travels the world there. But it's mostly for the Spanish Mexican area. Then we've got the Lemberger, or it's also named the Blauflankisch. I'll stick with the Lemberger, I think. I think that name seems a little bit it, it's easier to say, which is a dark skinned and makes not, and it goes nicely on red wine. That sounds great to me. Sweet Jubilee, which is a Red grape and obviously very sweet. Um, most of uh, pretty much all these grapes, I think all these grapes could be made into wine. Very, very good wine. And we got a Valiant, which is a red skinned hybrid grape. It's the hardest table grape variety around. Ah, yes, a table. A uh, table grape is a grape basically that you eat. And you don't squash it. You just, you just get it in a bag. You eat it and just nom, nom on it, nom on it, nom 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 on them grapes. Maybe not so violently like I just did there. Ah, we've got an interesting one, which is cotton candy grapes, which actually tastes apparent. I've never had any, but. Apparently they taste exactly like cotton, like you're eating cotton candy, but you get the benefits of it being a fruit. It's a what well, is a California creation. So <laughs> I know a lot of people have had it, had them. We can import them over here. I'm never actually tried anything like that though. Actually, it's been a while since I've had grapes. Uh, the next one along after cotton candy grapes we have moon balls <laughs> stop laughing you <laughs> which is large seeded thick with a thick green skin mostly grown from South Africa <laughs> stop laughing in the uh, don't be confused about this next one there's actually, it's the champagne grape. It has nothing to do with the sparkling champ, the champagne drink that we were talking about earlier. The, cham, the champagne grape are tiny little red grapes that are easy, that you could just, you give them to kids if they want, uh, just to pop in their mouths. Just quick, just quick poppings. <laughs> yeah, we got the Syria. Also named Shiraz. Shiraz, not the city in Iran, though. <laughs> it's it's perfect for a red wine grape. There we go. The Sultana or the Thompson Seedless, which make golden raisins. So dry. It's dried to make 
into raisins or currants because well that's that's a good way of getting your um, do does with you leftover grape you you squeeze you squeeze all the juice and then you turn it into a currant as such <laughs> and then there's something that is good to drink we, we got something called schlur which comes in a red and white grape it's for people like me who don't particularly like wine but want to look like we are drinking wine so i like i like the the red grape one of that it's it's not it's nice stuff it's basically just for it's just grape juice essentially just look fancy and you can also t turn your grapes into jams and obviously juices with the grape juices and vinegars and oils as well see when you have your vinegar i think that was originally made with grapes it's during the fermentation process you decide what you want to do with it after that and we have a yeast and stuff whether you want it to be alcoholic that's, that's up to you with the oils yep grapes deal well with that your grape oil stuff like that and yeah you're working on that Whew, I've, I've been i've been doing a good ramble ain't I? Oh, I see. I'm not really speaking to you as much, am I? I need, I, I need a drink. <clears throat> Beer was popular in Egypt. Yeah. Sorry, the message has <laughs> been on. Oh. I got a ramble. I got a good ramble. Uh, I think I have said hello to everybody. I think. I think. Uh, I think I saw Terry. Uh, yeah, Terry's here. Claire as well. Think Pink. Good to see you here. Glad. To well, you can have spark, sparkling wines, but yeah, you can have other, other sparkling wines, but mostly champagne comes to mind when you go to, when you talk about sparkling wines. It's all good. It depends. <laughs> I've never actually eaten black grapes. I only ever, I only ever like to eat the green, green grape style. It seemed much better for me. And I'm not actually done with the grapes topic yet. Because grapes aren't necessarily just down to the fruits in the grapes format. Grapes can also broaden out into a disambiguation sort of. Because there is something out there that's called a grape shot. And that's not getting load of grapes and shooting them at each other. <laughs> now that's something that they use in a projectile weapon. They put a load of bolt bearings in a shell and they all look like a bunch of grapes. All tiny little rounds inside. And then when it shoots out, shoots out loads of it spreads out when it's shot. So that's what that's where you see them holes where one shot leaves little a selection of holes in there so it basically gives you more wider range of hitting <laughs> yeah, grape shot projectile weapons as well oh, hey, grapes can be weapons <laughs> and then we've got a graphics pr programming <laughs> programming environment which is nicknamed grape it, uh, shorten it down a bit which is basically some sort of software it's a you it's in the university of bonn in germany 
Then we have a gravity pipe, which is abbreviated to grape, as in G-A-G-R-A-P-E. I think there's usually dots in there, but that's how it's abbreviated. And then that's a supercomputer. A load of massive things all connected, and it's all just one big computer. It's made in Tokyo, and it's meant to look at planets. You can... It could make actual vir virtual planet looking at. So it looks it looks really cool. <laughs> what it does? <laughs> Apparently, there's a gr there's a grapes movie out there. Apparently, it's a Czech com it's a comedy about wine from the Czech Republic. Never seen it. Funnily enough. I don't really watch Czech Republican movies, to be honest. Not, re not really on my to-do list. <laughs> we have Great Island, which is in West Virginia. <laughs> Funnily enough, they, they have grape vines across it. So that is a bit more grapey. That is a bit more fruit grape. So there's grape vines across on Grape Island. So. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's also people who have grapes in their names. There's a uh, Sydney Grapes. He's a comedian. He was born in 1887 and 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 died in 1958. He was an English comedian who did clever impersonations and co co comes from. Potter Heinem in Norfolk. That's good old Sydney grapes. And there was a guy called Steve Grapes who was born in 1953. He was a Norwich City football player. Played right midfield. Made 52 appearances and scored four goals. His Debut was in 1971 to 72, the promotion year for them, for Norwich City. And in 1975, he was loaned to Bournemouth. And in 1976, he moved to Cardiff in Ninian Park. Did that for seven years. And in 1982, I think he was a manager for Torquay and Bathany. Won some finished his career, I believe, there. <laughs> and then we have Don Cherry. Anna, and no, Don Cherry does isn't actually a great, but he was born on the 5th of, 5th of February, 1934, in Kingston, Ontario. He was an ice hockey player for the Boston Bruins, and a coach. He had a commentator nickname as Grapes. So that's a clever one. That one was. He used he used to have a TV half an hour interview show called Don Cherry's Grapevine. So yeah, he did in Coach's Corner and Hockey Night in Canada. So he did, the guy did a the guy actually did a lot of stuff. It seems so. Yeah. I think that covers everything grapes from me. Now it's 44 minutes, me talking about all grapey based stuff. I hope you've learned some stuff. I hope, I hope some stuff's gone in. <laughs> or you find, I hope you find it all exciting. Now it's time to just chill out and relax for the 15 minutes uh, it's amazing how useful grapes actually are all all the stuff that you use it for make wine and everything uh. All oh, the kittens seem to be sleeping. Come on, guys. 
Let's be cool. Let's have you run, running around the tiny kids. They're not going to do much running around. Yeah, I mentioned I mentioned the golden sultanas, where you dry the fruit, where you dry the grapes, dry the grapes out, and you turn them into sultanas, and which is included raisins. Yeah. Uh, you have a cake. What? What happens? Oh, hopefully one of you will fill the glass because I'm I'm not overly sure to be honest. I just realised it's it's Easter, isn't it now? And yeah, I've got a few eggs. I've only got a couple up here. There's a few downstairs still waiting. But, hey, I got a nice Easter egg from a fr from one of my church buddies. I've already start. I've already started this one. It's the cream egg. It's the cream egg one. Uh, I've already had the cream egg. I've not had the egg egg part of it though. Yeah. And then I brought, I brought up the uh, a Kit Kat chunky egg. <laughs> I'd bring up all the others, but that I would have, I would have been balancing them. So maybe I'll show. Well, actually, by the next show we come to, I'll probably have eaten them all. <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope everybody has a wonderful Easter. Can't believe it's come round again. So. Blooming quickly. <laughs> Easter. <sighs> to be fair, I haven't eaten much in the way of currants and raisins and sultanas and stuff. I haven't really eaten them for ages. Though they are inside fruit fruity products, so maybe I have eaten them. It's, they do come in like fruit and nut and stuff like that. So yeah, okay, fair enough. I probably had I probably had them inside that. <laughs> Hope you guys can all actually hear me. <laughs> I've been speaking for forty-seven minutes and you've not heard a word I'm saying. <laughs> oh, that'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? You'd just be staring at me. Yay, happy Easter. <laughs> I should think I just think my chat is very is very slow, it seems. Okay, very good. Okay. I had I had to double I had to double check. I wasn't me and my little paranoid. So I just I just hope you all have a wonderful Easter. Not really dressed up for it this year. Just, I just wanted. I just want to do a live stream and just having great, having great fun. I'm just relaxing now because that was that was quite a nice, a nice uh, speech I did. It's <sighs> oh, a movie. Get into the movie. Oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> oh yes. Um, gone for Kitten Academy. Oh. On this, gotta gotta support the kittens, ain't you? Kitten Academy rules. Keep it kitten, everyone. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know. <laughs> I had a. I had a pretty eventful day today. <laughs> I what I said earlier that I went with I was out with the church today. <sighs> we were I was I actually towards the end of the day I actually started walking up to people and actually talking to them without shadowing anybody. I just walked up and started having a conversation. I was giving them leaflets and everything, trying to convince them to come to the church. You know? Wow, what have I, what am I doing here? Where's this where's this epic confidence come from suddenly? I've been going to the, uh, the church has had an effect on me, a good effect. It's been good for me. It's been getting me more social and I'm glad. 
I'm talking church talk because, well, it's technically reverts round to wine and grapes and stuff because well, obviously Christian, when you go Christians, church, there's always the grapes, grape juice and stuff when you do the communion, which is basically the blood of Christ, but that you've also got the bread, which is the body of Christ. You do a communion at least once a month and that's good. You, you do it in your own way. Most of the time when I go up to the communion, I just grab the bread and and drink the juice there and then and just like I see I see people there they hold on and do prayers and stuff and well they know some sort of special thing to do. I don't know that sort of thing. But I'm glad I I'm glad I'm getting more social and I'm and I'm working out how to just walk up to people and have a chat with them. I just I don't speak the gospel or out like that. I've worked out the way to do it is go up and just tell them how I I joined the church. Tell them how I started and then try and convince them. To say, I started, I, wa I, I was very reserved as well. So I wasn't sure what to do, what benefits I could get from it. But I found out the benefits was getting social. And I've become... Over the past six, seven months, I've gradually got more social and more confident. I think it's because I've got to know the people at the church, at the church, and they've been the same people. And uh, it's all harmless. It's all harmless going up to talk to people. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm glad I'm making progress. Uh, Yeah, that's my that's that's my story. Cause yeah, well when, cause I find it intimidating. When I when I was sat in the river gardens, the guy and these two guys, and now <laughs> these two guys, Jana and Sam, they're both they're both my good buddies now. <laughs> but I've also got a lot of others that I like that I enjoy talking to as well. And it's like. It's all it's all snowballed into the right direction. I'm going up in the world. I'm getting much better, and I'm uh, I'm walking to town now. Who needs a bus? I could go to town earlier because while I'm walking, I don't have to I don't have to wait until half nine for the bus so I can use my bus pass. I'm usually already in there. I can just get in get into town. There we go. Got the done a lot of church services over Easter because I did Good Friday. I went to church on Good Friday. I did I did the outreach group today where we were talking to people. That was from 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock till 3 o'clock. It was about four hours. So it was about four hours. When it started, I wasn't really chatting with anybody because I was like, I'll just sit and watch. But then as it, time went on, I thought, I'll just because I saw two people stood there, and I'm like, I'll just, I'll just go and have a, I'll see, I'll go and see if I have a talk with them. I'll take a couple of leaflets and that, and so I can give it to them. And then spoke to them. And I'm like, okay, I did that all right. This isn't actually that bad. So I think I'm just scared of the rejection of it. So, yeah. but I did it. I did it. I went up and I went up and bloody did it. Yay! Tick in the tick column. Bit of confidence. <sighs> Easter. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the good thing about the outreach group. That's all we that's really what we do. We just walk around and just talk to people. We see them sat there on their own, maybe. We'll go up and uh, we'll up and have a chat with them. And now I can do that too. <laughs> there was like an hour it was like half an hour to go uh, about an hour to go. And I was getting into my groove of talking, and then they were like, Oh, we've got to pack up. Like, oh, just got into my groove. Like, ah. Oh, Anna, sorry, I missed, I, I, I didn't respond to your question. Easter, yes, uh, 
just having a family, going, meeting up with a family, having a having lunch in the afternoon. I go to church in the morning, and then I'll go, to, and then we'll go to my aunties. We'll we'll have a meal, just the four of us, since it's just the four of us now, because we keep because we, we kept losing family members and. Not going to go into that because I don't want to do that story again. That's a bit depressing. But it's just the four of us and we want to try and spend as much time as we can together. And I think that's fair enough. We want to enjoy the time together. So it's going to be kind of like a... We do it round round the table. It's going to be kind of like a Christmas dinner, but not at Christmas. It's like East, It's like an Easter dinner. Yeah, we'll call it that. It's an Easter dinner. Easter, Easter, sit around the table and have just a nice roast dinner. We sit, we just keep passing the foods around. It's like, oh, have you got some of that? Do you want some of that? Oh, I, lo I love that. When you do you have to do stuff like that. I get the, I get the buses home, but I don't, I don't get the bus there. I try and use the buses as little as possible now. I mean, I could walk back home, but sometimes the walk takes a lot out of me. So I don't want to overdo it, not yet. In due time, I'll be able to walk there and walk back, and then <laughs> I'll be unstoppable. Then I'll be able to go. To, I'll be able to go go to town and come back, and I won't have to worry about having my gold card. Or losing my gold card because I'll be able to get into town for free anyway. And get good exercise as well. Never never really considered walking as exercise. I guess walking long distances, testing your body out. I think that that's what's brought the confidence on in me. Maybe. Sounds feasible, doesn't it? I just... I'm just more com more confident. Uh, yeah, guys, we're, we're near the end of the show already. Where's the time going? <laughs> time flies when you're having fun, lad. I don't know why I'm doing an accent. What am I doing? Oh, I'm a bit... I don't know. Anyway, uh, well, next next two shows, I believe we've next Saturday, I believe we've got Beagle Part One and Beagle Part Two. After that, then on the twentieth, we should be going. We should be having a bit of a dinosaur show. I don't think I've posted it publicly yet, but I think I'm hoping on the twentieth. We'll, I'll be able to show off me dinosaurs. And then the 27th of April, I think, that should be our superhero show, which is which is like this. But instead of grapes, I'll be talking about superheroes, whatever I find out about them. But I haven't really found much out yet because I've been too busy researching grapes. So once I finish this, researching superheroes. But I think... <laughs> I think quite a lot of us really know a lot about superheroes anyway, so I just I might just be filling in a few gaps or it'll just be a fun just be a fun show. Because there'll be no pressure because everybody would chances are everybody would know the superheroes. I'll I'll see if I can find some obs, obscure special little nuggets of information just to make it entertaining. Like with the grapes, I added a bit of a bonus with the people and that supercomputer and the grape shop. It's amazing. If if you dig, you can find something very, very entertaining. Because at first, when I started with the grape, I thought, oh, this is gonna this is gonna be dull because I didn't but when you when you find these extra little nuggets of information, it's like, oh, this is getting exciting now. Grapes has a good history. Like, okay, yeah, let's go. Wonderful. Okay. Oh. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, 
I'm gonna have to say goodbye to you lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a, thank you everybody for being here. You have all been wonderful. And I will hopefully see some of you, if not all of you, next week. And the week after that. And the week after that for the dinosaurs. And then for the next live stream where you'll to see me talk superheroes. So, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Everybody keep it kitten. <laughs>